Akasa Air may be the new kid on the block, but there is nothing about today's flight screaming amateur hour or startup airline. Hi there, my name is Kevin. This channel came from a love of traveling, a love of the full process and the journey itself. I feature airline trip reports and high-end hotel reviews from all over the world. My reviews aren't sponsored by airlines or hotels, so you can be sure to get my unbiased, honest opinion. Am I an expert? You can decide. Am I fair? Yes, I am. Let's get into it. Welcome to Bengaluru. If you'd like to know the exact fare that I paid, or my next five videos in queue for publishing, please check out the description below. But first, how about some Buffalo Wild Wings? When I was here in December of 2022, this was THE Terminal, but now it's Terminal 1, after the recent opening of the much-anticipated Terminal 2. With the number of comments that I've received recently asking if I tried Bengaluru's new terminal, you'd think that the old one was like a hellhole. But it surely isn't. It's large and modern, and is laid out to maximize space, which is helpful for all the other airlines here with massive queues. Fortunately, that didn't apply to us. I suppose one benefit of being a brand new airline. Check-in was smooth and very painless. Having just flown their first flight in August of 2022 from Mumbai to Ahmedabad, their early growth is pretty impressive to say the least. Note that everything in this video was accurate at the time of writing and publishing, but as you'd expect with a brand new airline, these numbers will surely change pretty rapidly. In November of 2021, Akasa placed an order for 72 Boeing 737 MAX aircraft, 18 of which they already have on hand. That might seem like a big order for an airline that didn't even operate yet, and it is, but it had quite a bit of experience built into the mix. The airline's founder is Vinay Dubé, the former CEO of Jet Airways and GoFirst Airlines. Along with GoFirst's former CCO, the startup was able to secure investment relatively easy given the reputation of its founders. Akasa currently serves 12 destinations with its primary hubs being in Bengaluru and Mumbai. Over time, they hope to focus on connecting second and third tier cities across the country and expect to expand to international routes by the end of the year. India's Ministry of Civil Aviation stipulates that airlines must have at least 20 aircraft in their fleet before they're able to begin flying international routes, which I think just seems like smart regulation. They'll have 20 very soon, and in addition to the further 52 on order, Dubey recently noted, quote, before the end of this year, we're going to place another aircraft order that is going to be substantially larger than the 72 aircraft we have on order from the previous order placed. It's no secret that India's aviation market is growing at breakneck speeds, and there are plenty out there that doubt the potential, but I have just one anecdotal example that I use to put the scale of where India's market could be soon into context. To make this easy and drama-free, let's just say that India and China have similar populations. Right now, of the 100 largest airlines on Earth, 17 of them are Chinese, and they collectively fly over 12,000 flights every day. From the same list of airlines, five of them are Indian, which fly roughly 3,000 flights per day. It's not hard to imagine how the Indian aviation market could triple, quadruple, or even more over the next decade. The new Air India just ordered 470 aircraft. Indigo is said to plan to outdo them with their own order for over 500 aircraft. The growth is coming, whether you're ready or not. Something that's not coming though are airline-sponsored videos. Just your friendly reminder that this video is in no way, shape, or form sponsored by Akasa Air, and they had no idea that I'd be making this trip report, which to me is the essence of an unbiased review. Because of this, your views, likes, comments, and subscriptions on Patreon really do allow the channel to grow and keep that content flowing. So a big thank you in advance. The only misstep for Akasa today was the flight's delay. Not really the delay itself, but just the lack of communication about it. I'll optimistically put this in the growing pain column. It does kind of suck though, when your 30 minute, 167 mile flight is delayed by an hour though. 
Boarding eventually began, which we would be doing from a remote stand. So as we head over there, let's check out today's stats. We'd push back an hour behind schedule and make it up to just 23,000 feet for a few minutes before landing in Chennai, 32 minutes behind schedule. Got up a bit close and personal with today's 737 MAX 8, Akasa being one of the airlines choosing to brand it as a 737-8 for, I guess, obvious reasons at this point. Akasa Air is one of the few airlines out there that uses purple in their livery, which I do wish more airlines would do. In true corporate fashion, they've named their colors Sunrise Orange and Passionate Purple. The A of Akasa's logo is meant to represent the warmth of the rising sun. Our three-year-old aircraft was delivered to Akasa in September of 2022, and it looked to be in top shape. But I really don't enjoy the claustrophobic feel when you step onto a 737 with sky interior. Especially if you're taller, especially when compared to an A320. For today's flight, I booked 5 Alpha, which was a small additional fee to be sat in the first few rows, but didn't offer additional legroom, which I did know when booking. Overall, the seats were comfortable enough, if not a bit tight. Legroom was okay though, especially for such a short flight. When I booked this flight, I ordered some sort of hot food item, which was included with my bundle. At the time, I didn't realize how short the flight was. While we were still boarding, the crew came around to all passengers that had ordered hot food and offered to swap it out for a snack if they preferred, since there would be near no time to eat any hot item by the time it was heated up or hydrated. Small bottles of water were passed out to all passengers, and they also proactively did the drink and snack service before we even started to taxi something that I've never seen before. On one hand, I love the proactivity and efficiency of doing this on a short flight, but I can also imagine plenty of drinks spilling during takeoff. So I suppose a, a net neutral. We made our way to the departure runway and would be taking off to the east today. The spool up, takeoff, and airport stats are coming up now. Despite the cramped feel, I did appreciate the overhead vent and the mood lighting. Here's the full menu. If you actually want or need something on such a short flight, you'd need to make it known and be proactive since there was no cart service. The guy next to me was asked first about his meal, and he traded it in for caramel popcorn, and I couldn't resist. I saved it for later, and as, as far as caramel popcorn goes, this was just about as good as it gets. Making our second and final turn to line up for our final approach, we were soon making our way into Chennai.
a couple of uh, interesting aircraft on our short taxi, and then we were set free. Overall, from my first look at their website until the moment that my bag was in my hand, it was a thoroughly pleasant experience, only hiccup being the delay. I genuinely love flying on new airlines because I think it's interesting to see what their spin on things will be. Let's be honest, there's nothing really new or revolutionary that can be done in the context of a low-cost carrier. So I enjoy seeing which bits, pieces, and ideas the new carriers collect from their peers as they put together their own unique product. I do really hope that you enjoyed this trip report today. If you did, please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss my two upcoming Vistara trip reports. But first, I'll see you next time at the Leela Palace, Chennai. Thanks again for clicking that like button.